When you think of the word coral, what kind of adjectives come to your mind? I found that for most people, they use words like fragile, sensitive, and delicate to describe them. And while I wouldn't necessarily disagree, the corals that I found living here within the waterways of Miami seem to completely defy this notion. Not only are there a number of species thriving here, but it turns out our city is home to an exceedingly rare hybrid coral, which I believe might just have the potential to help us restore our coral reefs. Now, typically, when we're thinking about corals, we imagine them hailing from some pristine turquoise sea surrounding an exotic island archipelago. But believe it or not, all of the corals that you see here are living well within the city limits of Miami. In fact, four of these corals are literally living at the mouth of the Miami River in water that is anything but pristine. Trust me, I swam there. I had to take the pictures. It's not a place you want to go swimming. These are corals that really can only be categorized as being hardy and adaptable. Now, this is a video of me taking pictures of some of the corals you just saw. I'm sure that many of you have probably driven past this stretch of seawall dozens of times on your way to Miami Beach. And in case you've ever wondered how many different species of corals there are living there, I can tell you there are at least 16 by my count, which is really impressive for such an urban environment. But I'll be honest with you: when I first started exploring our waterways several years ago, I really didn't have very high expectations. But once I started finding healthy brain corals encrusted over shopping carts and discarded bicycle frames, the ideas that corals were somehow sensitive creatures gave way to perhaps they might just be adaptable opportunists. Now, the coral that you see here is one that I never expected to encounter living within the city limits of Miami, and I found it while I was exploring the Fisher Island seawall inside a government cut. And while it may not look like much to the casual observer, to a handful of coral biologists, this just might be like the holy grail to their research projects. Now, I've spoken to a researcher at the Smithsonian named Dr. Nicole Fogarty, and she tells me that the number of known coral hybrids like this in South Florida can literally be counted on one hand. So the fact that we have one of the rarest corals in the entire state living right here within our city is truly remarkable. Now let's zoom down to the coral starting high above South Florida. Now Miami is located at the northern limit of the Florida Reef Tract, which is the third largest barrier reef system in the world. This slide gives us a close view of Government Cut, which provides the main entryway for all of the large cargo and cruise ships that enter into the port of Miami. You can see Virginia Key to the south of Fisher Island, which is home to our city's wastewater treatment plant. And this slide gives us a close-up view of Government Cut itself. And as you can see, the hybrid coral is living on the southern shoreline along Fisher Island. And many of you have probably heard by now that there is going to be a major dredging project that is going to involve two years of dynamiting in order to dig this Government Cut an additional eight feet deep to accommodate larger ships. And while there's a number of corals that are going to be impacted by this project, I believe that the most important to be safeguarded is this hybrid coral living here in Fisher Island. Now, this video gives you a fisheye view of the coral and its relation to the city. Now, because of where it's located, it's subjected to significant fluctuations in water quality, temperature, and salinity with every changing tide. So, because of this, government cuts actually a really interesting proving ground in which only the hardiest corals are going to survive. It's kind of like Miami's very own coral lab or a coral farm. Besides the hybrid coral, there are literally hundreds of other corals that are living here. In fact, I see less coral diseases on the corals living within Government Cut than I do when I'm diving in the Florida Keys. So, why should we care about some mongrel hybrid coral that's living in one of the busiest waterways in the entire country? Well, I believe that this coral could be a super coral. The fact that it is surviving where it is suggests to me that it has a hardiness that deserves to be studied. But with the impending dredge project approaching, now is the time for us to obtain permits and collect fragments of this coral, such that we can study it more carefully. Because I believe that through aquaculture, this coral might just have the potential to help us restore our coral reefs. Now, let me back up a little bit and talk about the parent species of this hybrid. Prior to 1980, scenes like this were common across the Caribbean and here in Florida. In fact, to many people, the majestic branches of staghorn and elkhorn corals are like the icons of the coral reef, and for good reason. 
The critical habitat that they provide support an entire ecosystem of tropical fish and invertebrates. But unfortunately, since 1980, up to 95% of both elkhorn and staghorn have died off here in Florida and across the Caribbean. And in response to this, the United States added both these species to the endangered species list in 2006. Now, this die-off has largely been due to widespread disease and extreme temperatures. And believe it or not, the, most, the biggest thing that I have ever seen as far as coral die-off here in Florida occurred in January 2010. We had a two-week cold snap that just did an unbelievable amount of damage to our reefs. And yet, despite the fact that water temperatures inside of Biscayne Bay dropped to levels that should have been lethal, the fisher oil and hybrid coral managed to survive this cold snap without displaying any symptoms of stress. So why is that? Well, there's a concept in biology known as hybrid vigor, and basically it posits that hybrids are more fit for survival than either of its parents. The classic example is the mule. Mules are hybrids of horses and donkeys, and mules are harder working than horses, but are less stubborn than donkeys, so they're really great pack animals. And research done by Dr. Fogarty elsewhere in the Caribbean supports the fact that these fused staghorn corals are indeed vigorous hybrids. Like in government cut, they're often found in marginal habitats, and they seem to be less prone to bleaching than their parent species. Now, you're probably wondering in this photograph, well, how did the Fisher Island hybrid suddenly become brilliant fluorescent green? And the answer is that I took this photo at night, and I used specialized equipment that allows me to capture natural fluorescence in corals. And this is notable because it's highly unusual for either staghorn or elkhorn to express this level of fluorescence. And while coral fluorescence isn't fully yet understood, the prevailing hypothesis is that it may help the coral against harmful ultraviolet rays, kind of like a natural sunblock. So if this is the case, then the Fisher Island hybrid may be blessed with an additional layer of protection that its parents don't have, which is all the more reason why we need to better understand it now before the dredge project. And now you might be asking yourself, well, how did these hybrids even happen in the first place? Because corals are cemented in place onto the coral reef, it's not like they can just pick themselves up and find a mate of their own choosing. So instead, the sex lives of staghorn and elkhorn coral are tied to the August full moon. And spawning is synchronized in both species. They release their gametes into the water column where they're allowed to, to mix freely. So therefore, the possibility of hybridization is really quite high. And when I look at the Fisher Island hybrid, I see evolution in action. A reticulate evolution is a process in which one new species develops out of two parent species through hybridization. And research done by Dr. Fogarty supports that despite the fact that elkhorn and staghorn coral populations have been plummeting, there's been a corresponding increase in the number of hybrids across the Caribbean. But from the government's perspective, hybrids are not considered legitimate species, and therefore the Fisher Island hybrid isn't afforded the same level of protection under the Endangered Species Act that its parents would get, leaving its destiny in limbo. But I believe that the noblest destiny for the Fisher Island hybrid may be through the rehabilitation of our reefs. And there's a really great nonprofit organization in Key Largo called the Coral Restoration Foundation. And as you can see in these photos here, they're aquaculturing staghorn corals in offshore nursery sites. And they're doing this through asexual fragmentation. Basically, they take a branch of staghorn coral, they attach it to a secure base, and they let the branch grow into a new colony. And these colonies are clones. And so by using this method, you could take a single colony, like the Fisher Island hybrid, and through aquaculture, you could produce many hundreds of clones over several years through intensive aquaculture. Now, this is a staghorn coral that the Coral Restoration Foundation has successfully transplanted back to the reef. But in order to, to rehabilitate a reef successfully, we want to make sure that we're using only the hardiest strains of corals, because a weaker strain of coral is likely to end up succumbing to the same thing that caused the wild corals to die off in the first place. And so, the Fisher Island hybrid, given its hardiness and where it's surviving, I believe has the ability to thrive on any of Florida's reefs. So therefore, I believe that it's important for us to collect it before the dredging project begins so that we can get started. 
And if there was any question as to whether the hybrid coral living in government cut was some sort of fluke, it turns out that I've recently discovered a second hybrid coral living on the opposite side of Fisher Island. So the fact that we have two of the rarest corals in the entire state literally living right here along our shoreline in Miami proves to me, or at least suggests to me, that these are corals that are quite capable of adapting and evolving to survive in the 21st century. So I believe that in order for our reefs to ever achieve their former glory, it's really only going to be through the help of these super adapted hybrid corals, starting with a specimen from Fisher Island. Thank you. Have a <laughs> Thank you.